was a much better performance, wasn't it? So, yeah, we've managed to win 4-1 against Istanbul. I realise, again, this match review is late. Um, that's becoming a bit of a theme. <laughs> I'll do my best to get them on time from now on. Like, oh, Anyhow, regardless of that, yeah, the match was incredible. Uh, Bruno Fernandes is quite clearly our best player by far. Like, There's no doubt in my mind his consistency and his ability to just turn things on a whim and individually bring the entire team up. No one else does this in our squad. There might be more technically gifted footballers, but they just don't show it on as a consistent business uh, basis as Bruno Fernandes. And yeah, I mean, we, we could have been 1-0 up within like five minutes. A brilliant uh, run from Rashford. Uh, the finish was a little bit poor, the, and then the goalkeeper managed to save the follow-up. But, you know, we just pounded on the pressure after that. Um it was literally non-stop in the first half. And yeah, we get a corner. Um, it's just above uh, Edison Cavani's head, but then it goes uh, out to the outside of the box. And on the half volley, Bruno Fernandes leathers it straight into the top right-hand corner. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful goal. What a player he is, man. Like, I only... I just... I don't know. I, I, I'm... I'm so gutted that we didn't sign him at the start of last season because when he arrived he was such a catalyst for you know what we did and who knows what would have happened uh, you know uh, Liverpool probably would have still won the league but you know it, it certainly would have been a bit tighter I imagine like you know we might have been able to put on a bit more pressure but it is what it is we signed him in January and yeah I mean he hasn't even been here a year and the level of goals he scored and assisted and just created chances is just Absurd. He, he's just a different breed, really. Um, but yeah, second goal, uh, it, it was a cross from Tears. Uh, the goalkeeper should have caught it. He didn't. He fumbled it. And Bruno Fernandes is in the right place at the right time to slot it in. We had so many opportunities in that first half. It could have been five or six by half time. Um, it was fluid football. Uh, before that second goal went in, we scored another one, but it was offside. Uh, Rashford uh, again brilliant interchanges from Donny van der Beek and Bruno Fernandes and then yeah Rashford with a clever little finish under the goalkeeper but unfortunately he was offside uh, we get the third goal you know Penchester United coming in clutch again um, but again blatant penalty the only uh, question mark was whether Rashford was onside or offside when the ball was played from Victor Lindelof of all players so fair play to Lindelof a brilliant ball um, but yeah, he, he wasn't offside, uh, thankfully, and I mean, he just gets pushed. So it, it's a blatant penalty. Um, so yeah, uh, Bruno Fernandes, fair play. You know, he does the honourable thing. He said after the game that uh, he'd already said to Rashford that if we got a penalty in this game, he would uh, be allowed to take it because, in his own words, uh, Rashford's doing well for the like top scorer in the Champions League, so he wants to you know help as much as he can to try and get him that so it just speaks volumes about Bruno Fernandes's character like he didn't change what he said to Rashford because he was on a hat-trick this was his first Manchester United hat-trick that he could have got in the first half as well I can't remember the last time someone got a first half hat-trick for us but nevertheless he gave it to Rashford and Rashford slotted it in so I think Rashford is still the Champions League top scorer or at least joined you know I'm gonna have a look Champions League top scorer 2020 uh, no okay it's Robert Lewandowski that makes sense um, no sorry that might have been for last season I need to do 2020-2021 don't know let's have a look uh, okay it seems as though it's Haaland is it? 6 goals what's Rashford on? Rashford's on 5 alongside Morata okay yeah so Haaland's on 6 uh, Mar uh, Morata and Rashford are both on 5 so, you know, he's got, he's got a decent chance to be up there anyway. Um, but, yeah, uh, we, we could have and probably should have uh, scored more. But then the second half started and we made a couple of changes. Um, Lindelof went off because uh, he had problems with his back. But it, I think it was precautionary. And I think that's what Oli said in his press afterwards. Uh, and Twan's Bay came on. Um, and then later down the line, uh, we made some other changes. Wan Bissaka, I think, had a little bit of a twinge again, precautionary. So we brought on uh, Brandon Williams. Uh, we also brought on Matic, uh, Daniel James, and Mason Greenwood. I think were the other the other substitutes. But yeah, we kind of tailored off in the second half. There wasn't as much pressing intensity. Um, we kind of knew the job was done, and I suppose. We, we don't want to get unnecessary injuries with the fixture congestion being what it is uh, this season. 
So, you know, I, I'm not going to complain at that. We still created a few opportunities, but uh, Istanbul definitely had the better of it in the middle part of the second half. And yeah, they scored a wonderful free kick. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, David De Gea got a, a hand to it, but unfortunately it was already in. And goal line technology, fair enough. It, it's it's honestly impeccable. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a goal and it got given. It's fair enough. Um, and without goal line technology probably wouldn't have been a goal so you know fair play um and then i think they hit the bar with visca uh, with a shot after that but other than that they didn't really show too much and thankfully late on we get a break um i think it's donny van der beek with a wonderful one touch pass uh, through to mason greenwood uh greenwood bombs through and slots it to daniel james who slots it in and i'm really really happy for dan james he needs this goal uh hopefully it gives him a lot of confidence uh, obviously he'll be a bit part player this season but we need the entire squad because you know with the fixtures being two three a week uh, we need to rotate and we need everyone fit and available so he will get more game time this season so it, it's good for his confidence because he is a good player it's just his decision making at times is what lets him down really uh, but there was a there was a chance earlier where he ran at the defender and he beat him and then I think he passed it off and that's the kind of thing he wasn't doing uh, earlier in the season so yeah I thought I thought he had a good cameo when he came on not just because he scored same with Greenwood Greenwood's first touch was a little off today but I, I think that's because of whatever problems would be going off the field obviously his, um, one of his uh, good friends died uh, well took his own life uh, the, the City player which was you know a really really sad thing um, so yeah I mean that would have affected him um, of course uh, I think he picked up a, a minor injury or illness or that kind of thing so you know, we, we just got to back Greenwood. He'll be absolutely fine. He'll come back all guns firing. Uh, I mean, the last game he played before this, he, he scored against, was it PSG? It was PSG, wasn't it? If not, it's Leipzig. One of the two, ugh, it is PSG, surely. Regardless, he scored in a, in a big Champions League game. I think it is PSG, but if it's not, it's Leipzig. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, and uh, as I say at the start, this lineup is probably the strongest we've went with this season and i i would love if this was like our standard lineup pretty much um you know with uh, players like uh, pogba and greenwood uh, rotating in when necessary mctominay um but yeah i mean cavani looked brilliant again I, I can't wait for him to actually start scoring um his runs and his positional awareness is just so good like there were so many positions that he, he took up and the pass was either deflected or blocked or just didn't get through to him. Uh, he, he will score a lot this season, especially if we... Put, well, he will get a lot of games because of the rotation. But yeah, uh, Van Der Beek and Fred work as a midfield duo. Again, it's not a great um, opposition, of course. Uh, you know, no, no disrespect to Istanbul, but they're not the greatest team. So, you know, it's not the biggest test. But we struggle against teams that do sit back. Um, and I'm not saying Istanbul do, but, you know, lesser teams kind of gravitate to do that, to absorb the pressure, maybe hit you on, on account or a set piece or that kind of thing. Um, so the fact that having the option to have someone like Fred who just sits and is the anchor pretty much, and Donny who can drop back when necessary but also go forward creates a lot. And his, his awareness as well, I think he's got the best awareness of anyone in the squad really. Like, he knows where everyone is straight away. Like, he does a lot of one-touch passing. Uh, there was a lot of instances as well where the passing was a bit wayward into him. And then he managed to, like, slide and still uh, direct the pass where, where he wanted to go. He's a clever player. And, yeah, I would like to see that a lot more. I, I prefer this where it's gung-ho. Like, we could have conceded three, but then we could have scored eight. Like, I prefer that. It just builds and creates a lot more exciting football. And, yeah, it's more risky of course it is, but it, it's better, and that's kind of what I want to see. Instead of you know having two holding CDMs and then the front four being isolated for a lot of the games. So yeah, I, I I enjoyed this lineup, and I feel like Donny can play that like secondary centre midfield role, maybe a number six kind of. Um, hopefully he can do some of the you know long passing which is required in that role. But yeah, I feel like Fred or McTominay or Matic can do a solo uh, anchor run. Uh, sorry, role where you know they're just protecting the back four and then the rest of the 
the midfield and the attack can focus on well the attacking apart from Donny who can sit back if needs be or go forward like I, I like that a lot better than just having a 4-2-3-1 because I don't think that suits us at all um but hey ho I'm not going to complain I'm not going to go into negatives or anything because it was a wonderful display and all we need now is one point against either PSG or Leipzig and we guarantee uh, you know our success through the Champions League and we'll go to the round of 16 so let's hope um, but yeah we've got Southampton on the week weekend so that'll be fun hopefully uh, you know I think Danny Ings is still injured for them but of course Che Adams is doing well in his absence so we'll see but it needs to be three points hopefully it will be but yeah brilliant display